So hi everyone, we're pretty excited to be here and see quite a few people, although there is a workshop in parallel and I don't know what else is happening everywhere. So welcome. Um, let's first introduce ourselves. That's Lizzy. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I'm a Java software developer at the Compass Group uh, with my colleague Miriam here. Um, I'm a software developer, so that means that I would say about 70 or 80 percent of my work time is uh, uh, coding and some talking is involved, of course. We will see that later. And yeah. So I'm Miriam. Hi. Um, I work as a software analyst for, uh, at Compass Group. Uh, what do I do there? So I do requirements engineering. For those who don't know what it is, I talk to users and try to see what they actually expect from the software that Lizzy will be building afterwards. Um, but I'm not only that. I'm also um, doing mockups. So a lot of usability there and project management. So I'm kind of a Mädchen für alles, as we say in German. Um, especially when it comes to talking. So you might be wondering what the Compass Gruppe is. Most of you won't know it, probably. <laughs> Anyone have heard of it? No. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so Compass Gruppe provides business information to people, so to businesses mostly. We do, you can get, um, business register excerpts and land register excerpt at us and we do provide us this for the average Joe so everyone can go and on Firmenbuchkundbuch.at for example and just buy an excerpt or we do it also on a bigger scale for big businesses especially for banks because they need the, the land registers of course yeah so we do have uh, different products and yeah so much for the if you have any questions about them, just come to us. And oh yeah, what um, our boss told me to say, if there are good Java developers out, out there, we are hiring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come to us, we're cool. I mean, it's a nice work environment. <laughs> and we could use more girls too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although, Only Java. Hmm? Only Java? yeah, mainly, yeah. <laughs> Although now we are already four women in, I think, in the T IT department, we're yeah, but 20 one, in total. One developer, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, let's get to the talk. Okay, so what do we want to talk about today? Uh, we want to talk about um, how talking is, in fact, a very important part of software development to be able to uh, develop successful software that will have good user acceptance. You really have to ask yourself and the user many questions that you won't have expected in the beginning. And uh, if you want to have good usability, you have to do that. And good usability is something that uh, we all want and we all use if we can. Exactly. Do you know what this is? Everyone? I know it's small. I think it's very small. It's an espresso capsule. It's one of the worst crimes. I agree. It's not very good for the environment. Everyone has used it. Um, you can only use it in one way. There's no possible way you can put it in the wrong way in the machine. So that's an example of very good usability. Before, if you wanted an espresso, you had to check the coffee that you're using, you have to check the quantity of water you're putting through, you have to check the temperature of the water, you actually even have to check the coffee, how well it's grinded or not, how the weather is, whatever. <laughs> there are a ton of factors about making good espresso, I can tell you. Um, now, with Nespresso, yes, it's bad for the environment, I'm not a big fan either, but it's very good usability. You put it in, you press the button, and there you have the coffee. And it will always taste the same, which might be boring for some, but still, it's very good usability. So it's not only about IT in here, it affects us all, whatever we do. Okay, uh, we'll start with a, a small example. 
Um, the small example is um, I'm the developer and I heard that Miriam wants me to do some kind of search. So I go to her and I ask her, well, Miriam, what did you have in mind for me to develop for you? So you know there are quite a lot of cool searches out there. I think, yeah, I want a person search. Okay. Yeah, there is uh, something wrong with the... They're on it. They're on it. Um. I want a cool search where I can put in the first name, the last name, or the date of birth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the screen is not working. <laughs> <laughs> now it's working again. Okay. Okay. Oh, I feel the acne. Okay, so that's the specification I got from Miriam. Um, it's not as bad as it could be. I mean, it's the specification that I often get, like this. Mostly, of course, you get a written specification, but um, especially for a small part like this, you don't get much information about what she really expects from this search, which really is a problem, because uh, now she told me she wants to have a person search, and I would expect that what she expects from that search is that she puts in anything she wants and she gets the person she, she wants to get. But this is actually a really hard problem for, uh, for the computer. So we are used that uh, like a Google search uh, will deliver this, but we, also ha we always have to think about that um, in the Google search, many hundreds of people uh, develop in it and it's really a very complicated thing. So for example, for this search, um, it might be really difficult to say, well, what kind of birth date will be coming? So does she have a special format? How she puts it in? <coughs> Where is the first name? Is the first name before the last name? Should it find a last name and a first name after it? So that's one of the problems. Also, uh, if I have a big search, um, it might be that I have many results and if I have a web application, I cannot deliver all the results in one go or the user would uh, have to wait for a long time for his results. Um, so what we see is uh, that the devil is really in the details. So she, she told me she wants a search and she expects something from it, but I don't really know what she expects. So. What are ways to overcome this? One way would be just to, to do it as I think it would be good. That might work out okay. But it might also be that um, the usability after that is really bad and she won't be happy with my program. So one first point I could do is um, I go to her and I ask for examples. So I ask her for example, well, if you search for Smith, who do you expect to find? I want John Smith, Mary Smith, Anne Smith. So everyone with a last name of Smith. Well, I know this guy and the first name is also Smith. Smith, what's what? I don't remember his last name, to be honest. I would like to see him as well. You would like to find him just by the first name too? Of course. Okay. And if you're looking for Mary and Johnson, do you want to find a Mary Johnson? No, of course not. I want Mary Ann Johnson. That's why I put in the N. Okay. And if she's called Mary Ann with an E at the end, do you want to find her? Yeah, probably, because I'm not always sure if you put the E or not. And I mean, the spelling is quite complicated, especially with names. Yeah, it is. And if you put it in like that, who do you want to find? All the Johns then are born on March 3rd, 1980, of course. Okay. And would it be okay for you if um, the date would be in a special format? You would have to put it in in a, in a format that I give you? Is that even state of the art that I have to do a certain kind of format? Well, let's say it would be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> cheaper. So because lot, lots of usability, of course, cost a lot of money because they take much more time. So if I have a special format I can use as a programmer, it will be a lot less development time, it will be a lot less bugs, it will be a whole lot easier overall. 
Um, a second point that I try not to do with my users is um, I try to not use abstractions because um, while programmers are really good with abstractions because that's most of our work, um, really the, every, the everyday person does not have to be and sometimes it may even lead to miscommunications because the abstractions they have in their head are different abstractions than we, the technicians, have in our head. So we're both talking and we both think we do understand each other, but in reality we're talking about completely different things. And another point is I try to not ask technical questions. So I don't go to the user and ask her, um, do you want to search terms um, combined with and or do you want them combined with or? Because in that case, it might very well be that um, my user doesn't understand what I want and it might be that she doesn't want to tell me um, that she didn't understand my question but just tells me anything so that I go away. <laughs> or it might well be that she gets bored by my technical babble and just switches off and doesn't listen anymore. And this is not what I want. <sighs> <laughs> because I really need her feedback to be able to, to do a good job. Although, I mean, Schrödinger equation, who doesn't understand it? I mean. <laughs> so let's come to our second example. Um, there we want to see um, also some <laughs> kind of misinterpretations between users and developers, or even the stage before. So. Let's think about buying a product. I guess everyone has done that online at least once or at least <laughs> seen someone who has bought the product online, whatever it is, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so you want to buy something, you have it in your shopping cart and just before you're going away, th there's the checkout before you actually buy it. So the checkout process is the thing that we want to talk about now. Again, I'm the user. Lizzie is the developer, and I'm trying to, yeah, give her some kind of specification. Yeah, really, you're more of the, you're more the manager, right? True, My I'm boss. the manager. Yeah. yeah, of course, I'm your boss. <laughs> 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 so, boss, I heard you, you want a good checkout for a new website. Yes. Um, what did you have in mind? I want the users to register an account before checking out. Well, yeah, that sounds quite reasonable. And don't let them get the way without it. I want more users in my database. Come on, more email addresses. Okay, let and me to just do that, yeah. they need to register with an email address and a password and with confirmations of those two. Okay, let me show you a quick mock-up. Um, just for clarification, a mock-up is um, a short uh, drawing of a program that is going to be made. How it could look like. How it could look like, yeah. Was it something like that you had in mind? Definitely. I love the confirmations. That's exactly what I want. And you really want the confirmation for the email yes. address too? Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how it's done. Yeah. And <laughs> what? why are you laughing? <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at. Really, those people. <laughs> um, yeah, after that, they need two addresses. They, want to, they need to put in two addresses. Two addresses. Yep, definitely. Okay, like, and like that? Yeah, well, you need some things to put the address in. I mean, I, I want them to put the how's it, Wall Street, city, zip code, whatever, these kind of things in there. Okay, like, like this. Perfect! Exactly like that. Um, don't you think it maybe it's a bit long? They can scroll. <laughs> but maybe you're right. I've seen some things with a few columns. Let, let's put two columns or three. Okay, let's try this. Very nice. Ooh, I have an idea. We could do something even better. I've seen the, so I, I don't know how it's called, the, like the email address or the name, to put that inside where you're writing, you know? Uh, you inside. mean inside the, the input field? Yes, and you grade it out a little and then it's, it's very cool. <laughs> okay. Especially so when there are so many things. You mean like this? Oh, yeah, cool. It looks quite nice like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I want something else. <laughs> sure. Um, so Whatever you want. 
I want the people to be able to reset the form. Okay. Easily. So they click and everything is gone. Yeah. And I want them to see that the fields are mandatory with two stars. Two stars. <laughs> One star is not enough. <laughs> I want two stars. So something like that? <laughs> exactly. Totally. Oh, I love it. And you put it on the right side, the reset. I love it. That's something very different from out there. Yeah, it, it's sure very really innovative. Love. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so let's have a short look at that. I'm not the manager anymore. <laughs> I can tell you that 99 out of 100 people will hate the guys who designed this thing. First of all, resetting a form on the right side uh, on the bottom. Did it already happen to you? It did happen to me. <laughs> so you click, you want to save or go to next, and poof, there's nothing anymore. Well, you should read what's on there. <laughs> I don't read. I don't read these kind of things. Mm. Sorry. So that's one thing. But how could Lizzie get the things that I really want? I mean, it really didn't make much sense what I told her. I mean, you have no clue why I want the things. Yeah, especially the two addresses. So what's, what's it with those two addresses? Why, why do you want to have those? Because everyone has two addresses. <laughs> Everywhere well, you see, you have two addresses. That might be. Um, do you, do you, don't you think we maybe should um, differentiate between the two addresses? Or why, I, I don't know, like um, home address, work address, something like that? Maybe. They, I mean, users want to have a choice, yes. They want to have a choice to, for, for what? <sighs> well, you know, sometimes you buy a gift online. Yeah. So... You, you want to send it to someone. Okay. That's why. True. Uh, okay, so you want to, to be able to send the, the product you bought to another address. Yes. So which one is that address? <coughs> well, the one that I put in. Yeah, but we have two addresses now. So I, I assume one is the, the address the gift goes to and the other one? The invoice address, of course. Ah, okay, I see. So we probably should put um, labels on there to, to clarify that. Definitely. So in the end, what helps you in these kind of things? Once you see two addresses, well, how do I know what I want with two addresses, if you don't ask? There's one technique, the five whys. I'm sure that some of you have heard of it. Um, it's just asking why someone wants it to get to the root cause of something. So it's not something revolutionary we're telling you here. Just try to understand why someone wants something. I mean, the address uh, example is one example, but it happens to us on an everyday basis that people come to us that, yeah, I want an export button. And in the end, you get to understand that they don't want an export button, but they want the possibility to have to edit something in the software, which they now do by exporting it, um, doing something in Excel and importing it back again. So if the whole thing would be in the software, it would be much easier for everyone. Well, maybe not for the developer, but. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing, ask why. Uh, that's one of the most important questions. The other thing is don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, that exists. I, that's very obvious, I think. Look around, especially in uh, software development, there are tons of software outside. I mean, that look in the internet. Let's see, when you have a login button, would you put it on the top of the, of the website or on the button? On the top, just raise your hand. On the button, anyone? Uh, on the top. <laughs> so most of you would say on the top, yes. And more specifically, I would even put it on the top right because look at Google, look at Facebook, look at LinkedIn, look at all those big websites. They all have it already. They do have a login process. They have 
all these things already implemented. So yes, of course you want the users to have something special in your software, especially on the internet, you want something ex exceptional, blah, 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 all that. Don't do it in a way that the users don't know how to use the website or have to search a lot. Users don't want to search. So try not to reinvent the wheel and just look around you. The other thing is, put yourself in the user's shoes. It's a little bit with the Facebook thing. I mean, when you do expect the login to be on the top right bottom, why would the user want to search in the left corner uh, on the bottom? Yeah? So try to be consistent, try to see, to, to understand the use cases of the users. Yeah? And try them yourself, because oh, um, yeah. if you have done the form <laughs> 10 times, and it already goes on your nerves, it probably isn't a good form. Awful. Wording problems. That's something, so I, I don't have a funny picture here, sorry. Um, but I, I have a story. Um, a few years, two years ago, we wanted to go to the States and um, so you have to fill out this ESTA thing online to get the visa, blah, blah, blah. There's written first name, last name in the form. Does anyone of you have a second first name? I do. Would you put it in there? Anywhere? Okay, I almost missed my flight because I didn't put it in. And so it's not first name, but actually first name Z, which should have been there, which wasn't, or even a second field for the other first names, however they want to do it. But that was clearly a wording problem. I wouldn't have thought that this would be a problem at six o'clock in the morning at the Vienna airport, but it was. Um, so when you're developing something, if it's a software, Think about the words you use, look at them and make sure that not only technical people understand them, but the users. That's very important. Yeah, because we really don't want to be there. <laughs> um, because if we get to a situation where the developers think all their users are dumbasses, and all the users think, well, the developers don't understand me, they don't take me seriously, um, we won't be able to, to make good software um, because making good software really depends on talking with the users, taking the users seriously, um, not taking the users seriously if they want dumb things. So talk with your users and if you as a professional really see it's not a good idea, go to your user, tell them why it's not a good idea um, and they may understand you they probably will understand you and it will be easier the next time because they will already get an idea what is a good idea and what isn't. Definitely, and talking can be fun, also when it's gibberish sometimes. And we want really, uh, we want a good project, we want to, to even out all those factors, we want that the project isn't too expensive, it shouldn't take too long, we have a time schedule, we have the user acceptance because we really want to make a software that people use. I mean, if you have users that have to use your software, you can get away with bad user acceptance because they don't have a choice. But it, even then, it's really not a good idea. And one way to really achieve a good combination of the three is talk. Talk with the users, talk with the project leads, talk with your fellow developers, and so on. And I mean, if you're a developer and have some leverage on your boss, try to get the requirements engineer because they like talking. <laughs> and uh, maybe more than developers, just saying. And um, one incentive as a developer to do all that, even if it may not be in my job description is um, well, I enjoy doing a good project. I mean, it's more fun to, to ship the product and get uh, the feedback that 
it's pretty good, it has some bugs, but it's okay, then, oh my god, it's total crap, no one can ever use that. So that's one point. Also, if I educate my users to know what the problems are, the next product will be much easier to do. Yes, by educating the users, it, also, it helps for everyone. Um, it also helps the project managers, of course, because they won't just have a, well, that's shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. We just spent six months on developing that, but okay. But you will get wild shit. And that will help to be better at what we're doing. So all this was very nice, but we didn't talk at all about diversity or women and men and this kind of stuff, which we heard in the morning. And I mean, it's important. That's why we're here. Um, what we do want to say is about a lot more than that. Diversity is not only men and women, um, but as we know, it's age, ethnicities, a lot more. Yeah. Uh, we do think that it's important, not only in IT, but in general, in technical or even non-technical fields. We do have uh, non-technical um, people working at our company, and then you have 90% uh, of women working there, which is also not good. So what is important is to have diversity, to have a better working environment, and to be able to also focus on different kind of users. Because, yes, there is an average user, but well, you but do have quite a lot of different groups. Yeah, and it will be a lot easier, for example, if you have only developers that are between 20 and 30 and are all male, it will be really hard to develop a successful product for like female senior citizens, because there really won't be much connection between those two people. <clears throat> so, uh, what would be important is to change the overall attitude in society also. How to do it, we don't know. <laughs> we just can talk a lot. But, and we would like to help, for sure. But that's why we also stand here to show you, yes, they're great developers and people that talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> And they're women. So, yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, if you have any you questions. <laughs>